faceplate from the battery pack. As you can see, here is our gap. So imagine if there's placed water through. And that area, you can look right through the tire. So that wouldn't be a good idea, so we have to see that. We have to do something about this. And as you can see, on the battery housing, you can already see this was my last try. It was only a flat screw, and even a flat screw doesn't provide enough clearance. As you can see, don't have that much. So I believe if I would countersunk it, I would have a better chance to fit something, fit, fix something sturdily. So since our first kit, we know when you deal with Hylong, I believe is the name, kind batteries. You have a fixing point for a cable relief and you have the possibility to add the rubber grommet. Let's say it's an option because they don't come from the factory. So I think the first thing we make is uh, we make the first bracket. I believe I have an alu stripe and then we build a cable bit in. So the bracket for the cable relief is finished. As you can see, it will clamp very nicely so the cam cable can't be ripped off. I just used a little alloy sheet metal I had lying around and cut it out the rough form. Then I drilled the hold, then I made the fine tuning. It took me around 20 minutes. So I go ahead. Uh, I will cut the uh, rubber from a tube from a tire and wrap it around the cable so that it seals against the housing. And I will do uh, the water release hole at the deepest point, which will be around here. And I believe I take a 3.5 mm drill for that. And yeah, I guess this will be next. I finished the rubber grommet. As you can see, I cut some pieces out of the tire and make the first one for the cable relief and the second one for the grommet to the outside. So, I believe now I can assemble it and see where it gets us. Hope it is all nicely tight and sealed, but we will see. I put the mount together with the battery inside the frame and marked the lower and upper limit. Decide to go in the middle. Now I center it it's exactly and then I have my first mounting point then I from there off I can adjust and make the others okay I'll show you what it looks from the inside and you can see my cable release my rubber grommet nice in there. Later I lay the cable to the other side but for drilling the hole it's good where it is at the moment. Pull this out. Ah, so I pulled it out. I can drill without any problem in that area. So I drill the hole in the center. I think this first one is very critical. If this one is not in the center, you will see later that the battery pack is not good aligned. And from here out, when I mount it to the bike, it gives me the other points. 
So next step is to figure out the mounting points for the battery pack. One is already under here. That's why it sticks on it. And now we can take a look. <coughs> you want to check first that you can reach it. It will be a little bit not straight, but possible. The second one should be very easy. To make this two, if they are straight, we look as we make. So this is a 7 mil drill. I use a 5 mil steel with nut. And first I mark the height, which I have now exactly. After that I remove the pack and then I mark the middle of the frame. And then the battery should fit nice and straight. So I mark the center of the holes, there, and now I can do it. Hope it works. So I drilled the two holes. As you can see the wagnets fit nicely. They are not pressed yet. Just put them in to make sure they are properly inverted. Everything looks fine. And when I was in Germany, I bought a tool. I know I bought this one before, but uh, it was a very poor quality. Here it is. When you buy something like this, you want to make that sure that the head is very strong. My tool before, it has an angled iron and it bent and it just didn't work properly. The pins for the different diameters of the trap so get on top here then you can adjust it and yeah you pretty much ready to or it comes the instruction with it yep English English and German to be precise and yeah let's do some work nuts Oh, brakes working good. Both sides. Oops. So when the brake light come off, you can try if it is start to do a little bit more. No. Turn. Still a lot to do, but for the first test. Well, it does one. That's good. That's good. After I have proof that the kit is okay, now I can now know that uh, it will be worth it. So I just checked. Everything turns out nice. I marked the heads from the screw and yeah I marked it because when I glue the rubber from the back side I will drill a hole where the sweat goes so that it's nice and tight and sealed and there's still the lip we have to do so next will be little rubber cutting The idea behind it is <coughs> we know that this mounting is in the way of the splashing water from the front wheel. So I want to seal it a little bit better. I came up with the following idea. I used the mount as a brick, uh, as a template and cut the size of tube. That will go on the seam on the top because this one is straight. I have to think about that I 
want to put some rubber on here too because it's a little bit as you can see it's more inside so that I don't bend it I will provide a proper piece on both and then this one comes on top and as you can see where normally the gap is there is like a rubber lip <coughs> So I glue this with uh, super glue. Yeah, it should be fine. Well, as you can see, I glued it down the back side, reinforced the middle so it smooths the face. In the end, I didn't glue it that much so that the uh, aluminium plate can slide under it and the water can move out that side or through the hole in the aluminium base which we drilled last time so i think i could try to install it so it's finished mounted so you can see the rubber seal down here. So battery pack is on. It has enough clearance all around. It looks great. And you see it's nice and centered all over. So that looks nice. Now I can clear the tools and the place and route the power cable, which is the last cable to route. Uh, ah, you see it coming on. Here it's closed. So now, trigger the brake. And I want that the brake light comes on before and on that distance I will stick the contact. So next we attempt the uh, power supply. As you can see here is a XT60 connector both sides. So I go ahead with insulation tape and tape the blank cable off. This is firstly a rub protection that it don't rub through. Secondly, it avoids the water to go everywhere. And I will cover these two up because I don't need them because of the XT connector. Only if I have to disconnect the controller itself. Normally never. Yeah. So I put insulation tape and route it. Then it's to the next step. So as you can see, I insulated the cable. Also around the XT connector. So everything is nice and tight. But you can still open and close it nicely. I tied up the wiring under the rack, as you can see. Now it looks nice and tidy. And I used rubber bands to feed them through the holes and uses some wooden doubles to fix them. So every time you have to work on the wiring, you doesn't need to cut zip ties, but you can reuse the system. Only what is left here in the back is that we have to fix the mudguard in a good distance so that it doesn't touch the controller and doesn't interfere with the holder and I guess I make a plate as you can see I have here a lot of mounting possibilities and I will mount a holder that keeps the position from the mudguard steady in one position I mounted the mudguard Completely before it was wobbly, 
and moved to the controller and everywhere. Now I fixed it, I made like a L bracket here in the back. So now it's nice and sturdy. Doesn't interfere with the controller. And still have a lot clearance to the tire. So that's one point we can out of the list. If I, I'm not sure about the solution later, I want to make a light unit here where you have a turn signal and something like that. So this is maybe not final, but for the time being, it will suit the purpose very well. So normally here at the back we are done. So we can put back the bags on the rack and go ahead, work from here forward. So now is the first time we see it nearly complete, at least stage one. Complete lighting is still missing, so that will come later. But so well water resistance e-bike conversion I think it looks off so. well it looks like the components really made for each other it's not too obvious that it's an e-bike but figure the downside as you can see my handlebar is straight through and there is not much elevation in the stem so nearly to nothing and therefore this whole area is not very well protected for an impact so at first I had the idea to change the handlebar to a waist model, three centimeters would have been enough or to waste the stem a little bit. And by the way, yesterday I figured out when I power on the bike, switch on the lights. I have written down all settings from the system as is and make a factory reset, write down the values and change accordingly and go from there, check if it's still there or if it disappears. I have mounted the last bits and pieces, didn't put it on camera because um, I will change that but uh, I had to order parts, they will come in in a couple of days and because I want to see how it rides, I just mounted it, normally I don't like it as you know I'm not a fan of a display which is so disposed that when the bike flips it breaks or the switches, well, as you see everything is installed There's a nice clearance between the controller and the rear fender. There's still some pieces to connect like the lights. At the moment I just use the lights which you clip on, clip off. But in the long term the bike should have like an electrical system for safety equipment like turn signals, brake light, because otherwise I think uh, with this small silhouette, uh, you want to be seen. But as comes later, like it is now, it is assembled. One's great. Yesterday I, I went it to, um, yeah, yesterday morning I brought it down and uh, my first trip was to my family's place. And uh, so I went there with the spike. And as you can see, it is 18.7 kilometer 
force and back and uh, I'm uh, you can check uh, at 49.2 volts which is very good you still could go ahead with that yep so everything looks fine so far it is so quiet I, I thought I call it maybe like silent night and I check in later are nicely in. You can see that the loan hit the surface. Uh, should make sure that the battery pack goes smoothly in and out like that. You can see that it's very easy when the hole from the lock shows. And last tip for today is, if you have this battery pack, always lock it, because the lock itself, hopefully, hold the battery pack in this direction on the slide. So if you hit a bump, the battery doesn't come off. Here we are. Born to be kings, we are princes of the universe. Here, joke beside. Yeah, I changed a lot. I remember I stopped last time when we had the issue with the handlebar. So I decided to go just for a waist handlebar and how how nicely it fits so now you can see if i go with the handlebar to the direction of the frame it clears very beautiful it's well protected just as i want it so that's really great and here in the rear i had a little issue that when I shifted to a uh, high sprocket that the derailleur had contact with the motor so I adjusted the gear set that it doesn't that it stop at the sixth gear in the back so I have a protection layer in form of the sprocket so the chain doesn't flip over between motor and sprocket 
and I spaced it out left and right side with a stainless steel washer so I have a nice clearance both sides and it's parallel from side to side so that's great I finalized the routing of the cables that way I could uh, replace the bubble bands with zip ties and I kept out kept off every connector which is not connected at the moment so they can't water move in and I put the first layer with insulation tape to cover the top and then I put a heat shrink around and I think that will do the trick so everything up here looks nice put of course the retainer and the washer because this is final so it should be proper and I installed the pedal assist sensor down here. If you're interested in that, I will remove the bottom bracket. Uh, you may check out my video from the boulder conversion because there it is in more detail. Because sometimes it's very boring to tell the same stuff over and over again. But if this is your first video, and you missed some tips or tricks, like for example how I made this bracket for the display to uh, reposition it. It's in the Twinks build. It's also one of my videos. And I adjusted the brakes so they don't squeak anymore. I hope this does the trick too, because otherwise I will disassemble the brakes and put some copper paste in behind the brake pads to avoid the squeaking noise but as long as it works I can deal with it uh, what else did I do yeah all the small stuff so let's fire it up see how it runs Switch this on, switch this on, give the light to the display, so here's the data, so the last trip was 31.4 km, it took 1 hour 17 minutes, pedal assist level is 5, I can change that by up or down shift here. And you can program it how you like it best. I will figure out this with the test writes I do for little adjustments to the programming. And like to make a test one. So I go to pedal assist 5 and to the main display. And when I twist the throttle, that's well. When I engage the brake, it stops the wheel, that is good. If I open it, it gives it. Yeah, works perfectly. When this display is blinking at the battery, it shows recuperation, if you ask. And now I check the pedal assist. Wheel should come on. Yes, it does. When I stop pedaling, switch off. Good too. So this works as well. Yeah, looks all great. And wait, it was here. So since I 
made it roadworthy. It covered 158.6 kilometers with uh, in 7 hours 48 with an average speed from 24.4 and uh, you see the real time battery voltage is 49.6 and complete trip time on the set is 7 hours 48 and my maximum speed was 53.5 km per hour so, I believe this wraps it up for this episode. I really hope you liked it as much as I did. And yeah, hopefully I see you when I test write this thing. Oh, yeah, it feels well. Thank you all for bearing with me. I know sometimes it's very boring, but I like to go into the detail. I'm not much of an entertainer, as you may have figured out, but I try to improve. So, thank you, and see you next time.